great. All right, two for two. Doing great. Uh, all right. Um, by the way, I have a couple of pens here, but I have the book. Please, if you want, you can write something in the book or just pass it around or you can look through it uh, as we continue the show. But our next guest, uh, actually, uh, just to so you know, because it connects with our next guest, is that on Friday, uh, this Friday uh, night at 8 o'clock, uh, I put together another show um, at Drucarnia, which is a, an old printing shop uh, at Odvarta 12, uh, not far from here, actually. Um, and we're called uh, Red Alive, <clears throat> which is a new series where I kind of get local writers together to read uh, some of their fiction based on theme. And because we're so close to Halloween, uh, I thought it'd be fun to get some writers together to read some scary stories. Uh, so I'll, I'll be there uh, reading some of my work and uh, our next guest uh, will also be there. He's a published writer, but most people in Wroclaw uh, either know him as a teacher or an amazing stand-up comedian who, in the last year, has become one of the strongest uh, voices, I think, in the, in, in the comedy scene here in Wroclaw. Uh, so uh, please, if you could put your hand together for Mr. Simon Neal. I'm blushing. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I didn't prepare anything actually for tonight, but by chance in my pocket, <clears throat> I had a found a story. So, uh, just a short story. Um, so, uh, one of my favourite writers is the great American author John Steinbeck. I'm sure everyone's heard of John Steinbeck. Um, as well as his well-known novels, such as uh, Of Mice and Men and The Grapes of Wrath, he also wrote one travelogue, almost his last book, and it was called, um, it was called uh, Travels with Charlie in Search of America. Uh, now, Charlie was uh, his dog, who was a 10-year-old standard poodle, and if you're a poodle expert, uh, you'll know that standard poodle is actually, it's quite a big dog, it's, it's this big. It's not, not a small yappy one. So uh, for his road trip, Steinbeck ordered a custom-built camper van. And uh, he wrote, it's just like a little house with a double bed, a four burner stove, a heater, a refrigerator, and a chemical toilet exactly what I wanted. And he set off with Charlie uh, on a 10,000 mile trip to find the real America and write about the people he met along the way. <clears throat> so I decided a few years ago, inspired by Steinbeck and Charlie, to make my own road trip. Um, but it was across Europe rather than America. And I had two big dogs rather than one. And I didn't have a custom built camper I had a rented Ford Focus, not exactly what I wanted. On my trip, I spent a lot of time in motorway service stations, and you can tell a lot about the character of a country from what they sell in motorway service stations. So in France, they have a selection of fine wines. Uh, in Spain, uh, smoked legs of ham. Uh, in England, they sell CDs of pop hits from the 80s, still the best years. And in Germany, hardcore pornography. <laughs> so, like Steinbeck, I met some very interesting people, and one person in particular um, made me uh, write a short story about uh, the meeting. And um, this is the short story I have. Um, I've cut it down from about eight pages to eight paragraphs, so I can read it. Um, it's about a couple on holiday in Spain. Um, they, stand, they are standing by their car in a petrol a service station, and uh, it's hot, and they're very irritated with each other. And uh, the story's called Elephant in the Trees. 
Something else was moving there, in the trees. Something big and dark, David said to his wife. There's some kind of big animal there. Julia shifted her gaze with little, little interest. She said, I didn't know there were elephants in Spain. David kept his eyes fixed on the shadows between the trees. Yes, he thought, an elephant, very funny. A shape was suddenly visible, moving just behind the tree line. A guy, white hair, in a black t-shirt and black cycling shorts. David said, oh, it's only a jogger. The jogger stopped jogging, half hidden behind a tree. David stared. Was this guy actually taking a leak just 10 meters away from them? You would think the man would have better manners than to urinate near a family, but then it is Spain. David didn't want to look, but now the jogger was making some strange movements with his arms. David said, what's he doing now? Julia followed David's stare towards the trees. I don't know, she said, some kind of aerobic exercise. He was bending over, bending forwards and rubbing his legs. Or, she said, he could be having some kind of attack. The jogger was in the same position, bent forward, hands on knees. David looked across the car park, no one else around. An attack, he thought. What kind of attack? Surely, if it was serious, he'd be on the ground. David wished he could speak the language here. He asked his wife, do you know what the emergency number is in this country? She shook her head. Why should I know that? They both stared into the trees. The man was standing up straight now. He had stepped back from the tree into plain view. Was he looking in their direction? He bent forward again. He rubbed the backs of his legs from his thighs down to his ankles, reached up once more and pulled his shorts down to reveal, <clears throat> to reveal a bright white ass. He rubbed back up his legs all the way up to and along the crack of his pale ass. David stepped out from behind the door of the car. He took two steps forward and waved his arm aggressively. Hey, he shouted, hey, go fuck yourself. Go on, go fuck yourself. The man pulled up his shorts and jogged back into the trees. David watched the black figure disappear. He turned to face his wife. She was laughing. She waved her arm. Go fuck yourself, she repeated, giggling. Funny, David demanded. I think, she said, that's exactly what he was doing for the last five minutes. So the true, the true part of that story uh, was the old man in the woods pulling down his shorts to show me his ass. <clears throat> and uh, my first reaction was shock. I thought, he isn't really doing that, is he? And then uh, when it was clear that, yes, he was really doing that, uh, I got angry and I wanted to shout at him, but I was suddenly worried about getting the correct verb form in Spanish for go fuck yourself. <laughs> and uh, so all I did was wave my arm like an idiot. And uh, as, a, as a teacher, I always told my students that good grammar was important in every situation. <laughs> And uh, one letter mistake, and I could be screaming, fuck me, fuck me. <laughs> so, of course, um, I wasn't with uh, any wife, but putting my two dogs in the story wouldn't uh, be so interesting as they probably didn't care about seeing an old man's ass. Uh, unless I had thrown my tennis ball into his ass, uh, that would have taken a miracle shot, but. Uh, of course, with dogs, a road trip is different uh, in a number of ways. Rather than looking for the next interesting building or beautiful view, you're always searching for a good place to do a poo. So Steinbeck, on his trip, found an America he didn't expect, and I too discovered a different side of life to the one I imagined. And if you're thinking of making a similar trip, I'd like to give you my three top tips. One, the driver's seat of a Ford Focus is not perfect for a good night's sleep. Two, if a car parks next to you in a service station at night and it's a man, there's a 70% chance he's going to start masturbating. <laughs> three, if no cars park next to you in a service station at night, then go ahead, masturbate. <laughs>
Enjoy yourself. You're on holiday. Thank you. Thank you.